Hi, everybody. It's D Slater with Create with D. Welcome to my Wednesday morning lives where I'm streaming um, simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. As always, when you come on, if you'd like to say hello and let me know where you're from, um, it's always nice to see where everyone's watching from. And if you're watching the replay, please do so as well. I live in Northeast Indiana in a city called Kendallville, which is um, a little bit north of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Well, I have um, a really fun fun fold for you. So it's something that you'll want to um, get out your trimmer, but you can so do this fun fold um, with your scissors as well. It's called a barn door fold, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Um, as people are getting notifications that I'm live, I thought I would just share with you a couple of the new kits that Stampin' Up! has. Especially if you've got little ones in your um, in your circle, this is the new kit. Oh goodness, what's it called? Um, excuse me, real quick while I look. Frogs and friends. You'd like to see the underside of my chin, didn't you? <laughs> but this is frogs and friends, and it's one of these little games where you go like this, and then these little bug creatures flop in their mouth. So here's the frog, and then here's the friends. There's um, a fish and then a little shark. So um, really fun activity to make and then play with your um, with some of the kids in your life. And um, I believe this is going to be um, the new kit that's going to be on um, May 2nd or April 2nd. Um, every month Stampin' Up! releases two kits. This one is going to be, these are non-stamping kits, meaning that you don't need stamps. Um, they're just assemblies, which I love, um, but they're with a honeycombs. So um, these are some fun ones coming up. And this is actually gonna be what we're gonna do with the Keishan cards if you're local here on Tuesday, um, the third Tuesday of each month, this will be what we do. And what's nice on the berry one is that you can send it flat and then instruct them to open it up. Okay, um, well, that's um, just a little peek of some of the kits that my friend Linda has helped me put together on this. Um, but today what we're going to do is we're going to make this barn door card. Um, it does take um, scissors or your trimmer. Um, I like to use the trimmer just to get a straight, um, a straighter cut. It's one of these that looks intimidating, but once you know how to make it, it's not. Um, also, I'm going to so embrace some of my favorite stamp sets and punches that are going to be retiring at the end of April. And so um, also an excuse to play with those one more time. All right, let me turn the camera around and we'll get started making this barn door fun fold. All right. Um, so probably one of my favorite um, stamp sets and punches um, with florals is this petal park. Um, it is retiring and I'm so sorry to see it go. Um, I love a fast floral um, 3D thing that I can do. So if you haven't um, invested in this yet or you think it's something that you might like, I would definitely go ahead and consider getting it um, before the end of April so that you have that in your collection if you like it like I do. Also, um, it's a coordinating um, die set that kind of goes with the florals. It's Sentimental Park. Cup, um, last spring, this was a bundle um, or a suite of products that we all loved, but I love this sentiment. It has the kind of inside outside and then the floral images do work back to the petal park. Okay, so um, what we're going to need for this, um, let me, oops, here I see something. Hi, Marge. Um, Diana says, where are you located? I'm in Kendallville, Indiana, Diana. Um, I don't know if that's anywhere near you're at, but that's where I'm at. Um, so what we're going to need is your trimmer and that and some punches. So I purposely wanted to make a card that wasn't intimidating, that you didn't need a die cutting machine for, that it's something that um, as long as you had trimmer or scissors that you would be um, able to make. So um, here's the measurements that we're going to need. Let me get this in here. And 
Um, this will make sense as we get going here. But we're going to need um, for our card base eight and a half by five and a half, and we're going to score along the eight and a half side at four and a quarter. So that's what these little dots mean here. And then um, to make the base, what we're going to do is we're going to cut along the right five and a half inch side. We're going to come down at two and three fourths and cut to the score line and then cut up to the top. And this X means we're going to remove this corner section, this top section here. And that's what's going to give us this barn door. So like you kind of open it up like a barn door. But we're going to keep this section here and repurpose it. Okay, um, let me just go ahead and show you the rest of the measurements here. Um, my paper got a little wet. Um, besides the card base, you're going to need a cardstock. That's CS, a cardstock layer, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And two pieces of that layering cardstock at four and an eighth by two and five eighths. DSP stands for designer series paper. We're going to need two of them at four and two and a half and one at four and a half, four by one and a half. And let me just go and get the, the paper. I can't remember what the name of it is, just real quick. Also retiring is this delightfully eclectic paper stack. So there's tons and tons of different motifs in here, which is the eclectic part of it. And that's the designer paper that I'm using today. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll get making this barn door. Hi, Janet. All right, so ahead of time, just so that I um, everyone can see where we're going, here's our eight and a half by five and a half. And ahead of time, I've scored it. And then just so that you can see where I'm going to cut, I also scored it at that two and three fourths inch along the side of it. Um, so this is what I think you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this top half of the front panel. I'll get my trimmer in. And so what I'm going to do, again, looking at the diagram here, I need to turn it so that I have the five and a half side on the trimmer top. And we're going to put it at two and three fourths. Each of these um, squares on your trimmer is a fourth. So if you go to two and count one, two, three, that's three fourths. And what I like to do is um, you can use your guide here. You're going to come down to four and a fourth because that's on the seam. Or if you go ahead and score it ahead of time, um, you might be able to see your score a little easier. And I'm going to drop that down. And I'm going to very quickly cut up. Again, you could do this with the scissors. You could score it and then cut it. And now here I am on the eight and a half side. I'm going to line it up at four and a quarter. So there's four and one fourth is the next major line. Again, I'm going to drop it down this time. It would be drop down to three and three fourths, or you can look for your score line. And you can always cut, um, trim it just a little bit shy because you could always take your scissors and go back. So I drop the blade down. Now I'm going to very quickly slide up. Okay. So now when I'm done, I have this top section, and this is the barn door um, fun fold right here. And um, if you want to, you don't have to use this section, and you can just have it be open, but we're going to repurpose this section. Good morning, Janice. Janice is from Canada. Thank you, Janet, for watching, or Janice. All right, so um, here's our other elements that we're going to need to put our card together. Again, um, as per the measurements, you're going to need um, a piece of basic black or another layering cardstock. In this case, I'm going to use basic black, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and two pieces of four and three eighths by, or four and an eighth by two and five eighths. And let me go grab something again. 
And then we're going to need a layering piece of basic white at four by five and a quarter. And I've got some scraps for stamping and punching out the flowers. Ahead of time, I took um, this, um, this label punch. Oh my gosh, why can't I remember names? I need to really just put the names of it. But I think this punch is retiring. A lot of the punches are retiring. I um, always liked that image. We're going to use this. And then our designer paper, Delightfully Eclectic. Um, I love this purple, um, purple and black and white side. So again, we're going to need two pieces of four by two and a half and one piece of four by one and a half. Okay, super fast card. And um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and put the main elements together. So I'm gonna get my liquid glue. You can grab your liquid glue of or your glue of choice, your adhesive of choice. And we're going to take those four by two and a half pieces of designer paper and we're gonna mat them or layer them onto our basic black. So this paper does not have a direction to it, so I didn't have to be mindful of it. If yours um, does, you just want to make sure that you have it going in the right orientation of where we place it. So we got that. Alrighty. Um, so one of the panels that we just made is going to be on the front part of our barn door. Now you may notice that this is a little bit um, jagged. That means I need to, um, either I went too slow on my blade or I need to replace it. Chances are I need to swap out my blade on that. All right, so this one panel is gonna go right on the front, like so. And let's get some stamping done. So on some scrap piece of, of the basic white, I'm gonna take the tuxedo black ink and I'm really pressing my luck with having a white sweater on. <laughs> I'm gonna roll up my sleeves because it'll be just like me to get it on. And I'm gonna ink up this. This is the outline um, floral image. So I want, I kind of like to do the outline first. It's up to you. On the stamp, as a reminder, the large flower goes in the lower right-hand side that'll line up with our punch. And we'll do that. And get the lid on this for just a moment. And then I'm gonna take the layering one, kind of the filler flower, and we'll do our fresh freesia. And ink that up. Just as a reminder, um, or if you can see this, you can see that um, I sometimes I get questions about when to know to re-ink. This is getting close to needing to be re-inked because I can really see that the inside of it's getting lighter than the outside where it has a lot of the ink. So if you notice that, that's when you can kind of tap around to your edges and we'll get a good coverage on it. And I'm gonna line it up the best I can without getting my head in the shot. But this one's pretty forgiving if you don't have it exact. All right, look at that. Isn't that so pretty? So easy, super easy on this stamp set. And then I really liked the black outline and how you know it compare with the, the floral image on the card. Okay, around the designer paper. And while I have these two um, out, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a coordinating image on the inside. So I'm gonna do that same look, get my outline. And this time, I'm not gonna punch this one, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put the small little floral in the corner and put this off to the side and get my fresh freesia again. Again, I know I need to pick up some ink in the corners. Line this up. And I've got a coordinating look on the inside. Okay, now we can do some other gluing down. All right, I think I'm done with the flowers. 
All right, so now I'm going to take my layering piece of this is going to go on the inside. Again, this is four by five and a quarter. I was just making sure I did have it cut correctly. So if you wanted to, you don't have to do the extra layering on it. Um, I thought it really popped the designer paper to do that. And so I really wanted to accent and bring out that black that's in the center of that flower. Now this is going to go on the inside. So we can put that on the inside. And get that down. And we have this strip of designer paper. Again, this was four by one and a half. And it's going to go right up here at the top. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you can so use a coordinating um, color. Or, you know, a lot of times the backside of your designer paper coordinates with it. I'm just all about this um, fresh freesia. So I'm going to leave it be the same pattern. So you can mix and match all of these different pieces from your designer paper pack. And as you can see, it would be a good way of using up some scraps too. So I'm going to let that reside right up there in the corner. Okay, now as promised, um, this is that top half that we trimmed out. We're going to keep that and we're going to reuse it. And before I put this layer onto here, I do want to, I'm going to add the black and white gingham ribbon and see if I can get this tied. Sometimes I just keep the ribbon on the spool if I, you know, if I'm not sharing it for um, a card class. I have this on here. Get that tied down real tight, tightly. And we'll get that cut. Okay. So this, um, this label is going to take up a lot of the space here. Let me just kind of show you that. So I'm going to really push this. I'm going to kind of turn this so I've got the ribbon almost, you know, facing the edge. I think I'm going to bring that down just a little more. I can trim that back a little later. Okay, now I'm ready to glue this layer onto our base. And I want this ribbon to be mostly in the center. So you can scooch this up just a little bit. There we go. And we'll put this down. This is, um, I think it's an easy fun fold and I, it's sure to impress whoever that you send this to. They're not gonna, they're gonna say, oh my gosh, look how intricate this is. I'm gonna switch this up just a little bit. This is why I like liquid glue. It gives me a little play on these type of things. All right. When we put, now we're gonna put this onto the center of our card base. What we want to do is we want to be mindful not to put any glue up here. So like I'm putting a big X here, do not put anything up on the top. We want to glue just on the bottom because if we put the glue on the top, we'll adhere it to our um, the inside. And we, of course we don't want that. So, um, you know, that's why it's kind of nice to almost have the ribbon there. So if I put my fingers like this, you know, if you want to say, well, where, how far do I go? Kind of just put your hands in the middle of your um, layering piece and then just stay south of your fingers. So that way you're sure not to go over where you need to go. Now when we drop this down, we're just going to center it. So it just gets centered right into our card base, our card front. And so now we, since we stayed in the area, this is all nice. Oh shoot, got a little smudge there. There we go. Um, when I stamped, I stamped in purpose um, here on the lower half of it. That way when it's closed, unless purposely you wanted to see something here, I wanted to stay in the lower half on my stamping. And then when I go to write the same thing, I'll probably, I want to make sure that I stay in here. So when it closed, it looks like this. All right, let's go ahead and we'll finish up the card. And then I do have another sneak peek of something that we I made with my team that earned a little bit of a, of a special meeting with us, with me. 
All right, so this is from Sentimental Park, and I'm using um, the Thinking of You. So again, it's kind of the inside outside if you wanted to do that, or you can just layer it as I'm going to do right now. Um, so I've got the Thinking of You. I'm going to use our Memento Black ink. Got my white sweater out of the road. Whoops, I've got black ink on me somewhere. And I'm going to stamp it um, relatively high because I want to get the U in there as well. And now we have the U. And drop that down. Thinking of you. And now we can punch out our flowers. And as a reminder, we, um, you know, made sure that we had the largest flower in the lower right corner. And then that's going to allow us to line up the flowers so much easier. Kind of get that. Squish it over just a little bit. And punch. Super easy. To make these flowers with this um, the petal park flower punch all right so now on here let's get some dimensionals dimensionals are foam dots that raise images and i'm going to actually use two of them here on the card base to kind of anchor down that um the ribbon here first and kind of do that that way my ribbon's not going to shift anymore. That one kind of curled on me. And now on my sentiment, I'm going to put it on the top and the bottom. Now I've got adhesive all the way around it. So I know that ribbon's going to stay right where I want it. Hope I don't have black anymore <laughs> on my hands. That's why we put the ribbon kind of off to the side because I knew that was going to take up um, a nice little chunk of that center. Get that trimmed out. All right, let's put on our flowers. I'm going to go ahead and put dimensionals, full dimensionals on that one. And on here, if you have the mini, you can do the minis. I'm going to go ahead and just take this little corner off right now and put that on the little one. I think one of, I think the dimensionals um, would work on that too on it. And I'm going to put one up here in the upper left hand corner, kind of overlapping. And if you want to, I'm kind of, you can kind of push in towards the center and that raises it just a little bit. And let's put the small one next to it. Same thing. If you want to, you can kind of slightly bend it to give it more of a 3D look. And then we'll do the bottom one. Yes, Jana's holiday cards would be so great. I agree. I know I started talking holiday and it's like, no, I want to get enjoy summer, but you know, we almost need to start making them. Um, I've got these um, iridescent pearls and I just thought that would, um, you know, I thought the pearls would give a nod to the white specks or the white dots that's in the paper. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a white pearl in the center of each of the flowers. A rhinestone. We have the basic, you know, the black ones would be nice on this too. Um, There's some that have some like pink and purple tones um, would be pretty on that as well. I just all of a sudden I have a lot of sympathy cards that I need to um, to make, and I have one friend that her favorite color is purple, so this is going to her, um, or at least the one that doesn't have all of my black smudges. <laughs> Okay, um, let me, um, I'm going to turn the camera around here. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for saying hi. Um, so that's our project here today. Um, this is something that I made with a few of my teens. I have what is called a celebration celebration. I had a, two of my um, beautiful stampers that met goals during um, a challenge that we had and so we played with some of the new products this is some of the new in colors and the new designer paper 
but we made this fold together at our um, special team meeting on it. Same concept, but you know, as what Janice was saying, like the designer paper is so going to dictate what it is. Um, I will have my host code up there. I don't have my paper um, here in front of me to have this, but this would be this week's class. Um, what you would get is an assorted um, cards cardstock and the paper from the um, delightfully eclectic um, there would be three cards and so that would be my thank you if you place an online order with me through Easter through the end of the month um, of forty dollars or more that would be you know what I would give you as a thank you for that and um, let me see if there's anything else I can add um, I don't think so um, Here's the, the measurements again. If you want to take a screenshot, I'll get my head off of here real quick. So that's the, you know, those are the measurements just as a little reminder on what it all was for that. If you like the layers that I did. All right. Um, that's everything that I have for you today. I hope that everybody has a great Wednesday. And I do have one more. Um, I have a little um, treat holder that video that I'm going to do and pop on sometime unannounced um, yet this week that I think would be perfect for um, any type of gift giving that you might have. If you've got time, you could do it for Easter. It might be a little close getting the, the stuff in for that because it's some um, some. The container is something I found on Amazon, um, but it might be great for upcoming um, Mother's Day, Father's Day, if you've got any spring craft shows and stuff. So um, please make sure to you know, keep check, checking back with my channels um, if you're on YouTube with me or if you're on Facebook. All right, everybody, you have, again, a great Wednesday and rest of your week and happy crafting. Bye-bye.